Okay, so what we're going to do in this experiment is talk about chimeric faces. The experiment is based off of a study by Levy in 1983, and it uses these stimuli called chimeric faces. In Greek mythology, chimera is a monster that's made from different type of animal parts. So, for example, it might be a griffin, um, that's the uh, body of a lion, but the head and wings of an eagle. eagle. So in this context of this experiment, a chimera is just two different pictures of a person. They're combined in such a way that each half has a different expression. Um, it makes them look a little funny, but you'll get the hang of it. So because of the way of our brains are set up, what appears in the left visual field is on the right, remember, in the occipital lobe, and what appears in the right visual field goes to the left. So because they're split in the middle so that you can um, decide which half of your brain uh, is doing the face processing. So this experiment is designed to look at brain asymmetry, so how lateralized people are. And what that means is it looks at the differences between the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. This research is done on normal, non-brain damaged people. Okay, so yeah. Um, and I'm sure you've read, read somewhere that there's right brain people, left brain people, but a lot of that's inaccurate. It's not like if you're artistic, you're bright-brained, and if you're more analytical, you're left-brained. There's not a lot of basis to that. Uh, you also hear about the Mozart effect, which is where people will play uh, Mozart in their right ear to develop their logical skills. And it's a little bogus. So there's some truth to the fact that people have one half of the brain that's dominant over the other. Um, and that's because we have two hemispheres, right and left, and they connect by the corpus callosum. We've talked a little bit about Sperry syndrome, um, where they will um, cut the corpus callosum for people with like severe epilepsy, so they'll be split-brained. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do here <clears throat> is uh, study lateralization, and you're going to um, hit the next slide here. Get out a piece of paper, <clears throat> a number at 1 through 36, or just get out a piece of paper or something you can write on for this experiment. Okay. Alright, next. What you're going to do is you're going to see a series of spliced faces. On each side there's going to be two faces, um, a top face and a bottom face. Each face will be smiling on one half and neutral on the other half. Your task is to decide which face, the top or the bottom, so you can label them like 1 or 2 or T or B, looks happier. So we're picking the happy face. So here's an example. So you would pick which face looks happier, the top half or the bottom half. Now, you have to pick one the entire time. So you must have at least 36 of these written down, and you must respond to every trial. So write like T or B on your paper for each trial. It's going to flip through automatically, and then at the end, we'll talk about what that means. So, ready? Here we go.
Okay, so the experiment is now over. <clears throat> so look at the number of times that you responded top to the following slides. I'll give you just a couple seconds to do that. Okay, now count the number of times you responded bottom to the other slides that we haven't counted already. All right, <clears throat> add those two together. So the number of times to top to those first number and the number of times to bottom to the other numbers and call that sum the right hemisphere. <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is count the number of times you responded bottom to those following trials. And now next, count the number of times you responded top to the reverse trials. So we're creating a left total score, just like we created the right one.
right, what do I do with those two scores? <clears throat> so, um, you should make sure your right and left totals add up to 36 to make sure you've done it right. If you haven't, you can come back up the video and try and make sure, figure out where you missed up. <clears throat> but we're going to take that right sum and subtract the left sum. Divide that difference by 36. This is the number you're going to put online for me so we can look at everybody's laterality um, quotient. So right sum minus left sum divided by 36. It can be negative. What does that mean? That means it's more left. Positive numbers are more right. <clears throat> the other thing you're going to do is indicate what gender you are and your hand preference. Um, you're not going to hand it to the experimenter because we're not doing this in class, but you will go and post it online where you're watching this video. <clears throat> so what's going on in this experiment? So it's a replication of that Levy study. Um, and we talked about how the two picture halves are combined. And the left half is seen by the right hemisphere, right half seen by the left hemisphere. So the whole thing is testing brain asymmetry, so lateralization of our brain. How much is, um, is the difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere in non-brain damaged folks? <clears throat> so we've talked before about how there are two separate hemispheres, and they're able to function independently. So then we communicate via the corpus callosum. So when you cut the corpus callosum, it's callosumotomy which I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing, but you get the idea. And when you do that split brain syndrome that we talked about for Sperry's experiments. Okay, so here's a reminder of Sperry's experiments. If you t told them to pick up the key in the left uh, hemisphere of vision and, um, <clears throat> and uh, showed them the word ring into the right hemisphere, sorry, that's a typo, uh, and asked them to report the word. <clears throat> what they'll say is ring because the ring half will go to the left brain which is where um, speech production is remember Wernicke's area uh, but they can pick up the key with their left hand um, because it's controlled by the right hemisphere but they can't tell you they saw the word key but they can pick up key even though they couldn't tell you they saw the word key so just a reminder of how Sperry's works <clears throat> um, and then what, what happened in our experiment, we'll see when we get the data, uh, there <clears throat> might be some evidence of lateralization, so we'll test that data against zero, because zero would be no lateralization. Um, so one side may be seen as prettier, or happier, or younger. Okay, so a negative number suggests... Um, <clears throat> No, that's backwards. I'm sorry. So a negative number suggests left hemisphere processing, right? Because that means the left hemisphere number is larger. Positive number suggests that it's a right hemisphere processing. Okay, if you're right on zero, both hemispheres contribute at the same time. <clears throat> so some caveats. This effect is stronger for men than for women. It is uh, right-hand dominant, so lots of right-handed people um, show 75% right hemisphere dominance. Um, <clears throat> it's also left-hand dominant, so 60% of left-handed people show a right hemisphere dominance, but that's slightly different, so there's a little bit of difference between left and right-handers. And there is some variability in the scale, but it's mostly stable across your lifespan. Alright, so go post your results now.